Advent, Sunday number three, Sunday of joy, candles, tree, check, tree, check, unreasonable sense of anticipation, check, presents wrapped and meal plans made, well, <laughs> if you have family on the East Coast and have to beat the shipping rush, then check. <laughs> Otherwise, I leave it to your own devices. Malls, once again crowded, check. Favorite Christmas music on repeat, yes. Nearly everywhere. Christmas has been acknowledged and in some cases embraced. So please explain to us, Mr. Lackey, why we are still trudging around in the desert with John the Baptist. Let's get on with Christmas. Where are my favorite hymns? I'm saying that for you just to relieve you of the pressure. Am I just the Scrooge with a gown and a stole who drags out this Advent nonsense out of some perverted sense of superiority? No. No. Although I have been rather stubborn through the years about the need for Advent as a distinct season. Certain hymns, yes. And a pattern of readings, yes. A habit that I believe is necessary to properly prepare us as people of God to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And John the Baptist plays an important part in that. Preparation. Last week I called him the prophet of preparation. But John's is the voice that sets the stage for Jesus. And John's is the ministry that strengthens Jesus' connection to the prophets of liberation, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Micah and Zephaniah, among others. John demands repentance and on this day gets it from the people who flock to the sound of his voice. John John's abrupt and often harsh proclamation has been used and is used rather by Jesus as the springboard for his ministry in the world. John is the starting point. Now Jesus is certainly the superior storyteller and a much more imaginative teacher than John, but he's the one who takes up John's cause after Herod throws John in jail. The core of the message doesn't change. And today, today the passage in Luke's gospel is, is John's shining moment. It's the number one sermon in John's arsenal. It's the one we all remember. Repent, you snakes. Bear fruit that proves your repentance. You're not fooling me, says John all pious and dressed for baptism. Get over yourselves, repent. This may have been his regular refrain, but this day, his congregation is moved to respond. I wonder if it's real repentance that causes the people to ask their questions. What should we do? You've convinced us, stop shouting, don't call us names, please, John. What should we do? Help us. Move us along. And John gets to give some advice. And that advice, well, that advice sounds like Jesus. Share what you have. Reach into your overflowing closets and cupboards and share the wealth of your abundance. To the tax collector, he says, don't fudge the numbers. Don't take more than you're owed. 
and to the soldiers. Stop abusing your power. Don't resort to violence. Be content with yourselves. Is that not the same message that Jesus offered in dozens of different ways? Love one another, enemy and friend alike. Love God and neighbor, for this is all the law. Yeah, okay, John, being John, puts it in the context of hellfire and damnation. The axe is laying at the root of the tree and all of that, the unquenchable fire. Like, ooh, okay, John, I'm on board. But his calls to act, we miss his call to action in the midst of all that unquenchable fire talk. His calls to action are consistent with the kingdom that Jesus proclaims. Luke, Luke even calls John's tirade good news. You're not convinced, though. Why do we still need this? I hear you saying, you did say that out loud. Why this? Why on the Sunday of joy of all times, don't we hear some joy? Come on, come on. Okay. But let's consider the state of our celebrations to this point, shall we? And I'm not even gonna talk about the pandemic. That's an aside. Let's think about the state of our Christmas celebrations. We have been pushed into a frenzy of buying and planning. That, for many of us, is what Christmas means. Yes, the lights are beautiful, and yes, the music is touching, but we've been exposed for more than a month now to the message that you better get it now, and you better get it quick, and there might not be enough. And the crowds at the malls are losing their patience. Some of that holiday joy is rubbing a little thin. Some retailers are actually running out of stock. Some tempers are a little short, and Christmas lists are still long. And no matter how often we promise ourselves that this Christmas will be different, collectively, we continue to use the season to increase the stock value of major corporations without really adding any value to our lives. Yes, there are surprises and some delight in the eyes of the very young and the very old. But what have we really gained by launching, launching Christmas November the 12th? That's a rhetorical question. You can answer that for yourselves. Because in the church, there are a few stubborn souls, and I am one of them, who insist that a sparser season of preparation is necessary. Who insist that the readings and reflections ought to encourage a different perspective. We consider the coming of Christ both as an infant and in his risen glory as an event that frees us from all kinds of bondage, even the bondage of self-satisfied comfort and excess. Four weeks of waiting, that's all we ask. Four weeks of careful contemplation of the consequences of committing to the kingdom of God. This is the season that prepares us to live according to the call of Christ, according to the kingdom that he proclaims. And John's simple, strident advice should still speak to us. I moved to ask what our Christmas celebrations would look like if we took John at his word. If, rather than emptying store shelves of trinkets, we emptied our closets and cupboards for the good of those whose cupboards and closets are always empty. We have seen that happen in this city and within this congregation. And when it happens, it's delightful. It brings joy, it brings tears of relief, it brings the kingdom closer. 
And what if businesses, rather than maximizing profits at the expense of workers and consumers, a quick question outside the box here, how many Black Friday advertisements did you see this past month? How many? It's, it's, it boggles the mind. And we, like lemmings, follow the lack of light. So what if businesses, rather than maximizing their profits at the expense of workers and consumers, decided that quality and integrity was more important than constantly raising stock dividends? And what if people entrusted with power remembered that power should serve the people? What if we overturned that old playground rule of might makes right and sought peace and welfare for all without resorting to threat or violence to achieve the comforts of only a few? What if our Christmas preparations looked like that? That would be a December to remember and a November, and an October, and a September. And John and Jesus do more than suggest that that is what the kingdom of God is like. And that is where we could find some joy. Believe it or not, Christmas in the church is a rather late addition to the list of holy days. It is important. It is an important recognition of God's desire to be with us, to take flesh and live among us. And as such, Christmas offers us a way to begin thinking about the kingdom of God. And that kingdom, that kingdom John and Jesus both proclaim is so different than what we're used to that we need time to get ready for it. Time to consider the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that form the foundation of the new life that Jesus offers. Next week, our thoughts turn to love, and we light the last candle, and the anticipation will have built in some of us to beyond our ability to contain it. But next week, we think of love, the love of a mother for her child, soon to be born, the love of God who takes such a chance to come in the flesh. And even next Sunday, we still will not have reached the point of miracle. We aren't there yet. Patience is needed. Preparation is important. Because God has changed the rules. And God's love is in the process of changing the world. And we are not ready. <laughs>